Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our contemporary worship will begin in a few moments. Good morning. Good morning, Jean. Well, good morning and welcome to worship here at Our Saviors and thank you for finding your seats. You've done a wonderful job and thank you so much to those of you who have ventured all the way up here. Such brave souls, thank you. I promise it's not like a splash zone or anything. Everybody gets the same worship experience, but we know it's hard to do something a little different. I appreciate it, thank you. I also want to share a welcome to those who are joining us by Facebook Live and our television broadcast. Welcome to this first Sunday in Advent. The season of Advent is a traditional time to focus on waiting as we prepare to welcome baby Jesus on Christmas Day and as we prepare to welcome Jesus in his second coming. It's hard to wait for something for 2,000 years, though, and it might feel like an empty promise, and some of you might not even want it to happen since Sometimes popular Christian culture has made Jesus' return seem like a faithful, uh, sorry, a frightful thing with fire and brimstone and judgment. But we wait with hope because with Jesus' glorious return, we believe that all will be made right. Love will reign. All will be well. All will be healed. And all will be whole. And that is something worth waiting for, and we dare to hope. So we sing together, we will wait, and I welcome the Prouties, the Cooks, and the, oh my gosh, the Frankens, <laughs> to come forward and help me light the Advent wreath. Serving lines, we will wait with ever open 
At every beginning, there is an impatient hope for the promise of what is coming. While we wait, O oh God, revive our hope. We gather here to expect the unexpected and imagine the unimaginable. While we wait, O oh God, revive our hope. We wait for the day when God will recycle tanks into tractors and transform minefields into playgrounds and soccer fields. While we wait, O oh God, revive our hope. We keep hope alive by telling stories that offer a glimmer of a future and awake dormant hope within us. While we wait, O oh God, revive our hope. Jesus, we welcome your presence now with the lighting of this candle, whose flame brings warmth to winter and fills this place with the glow of hope. Amen. We pray. God, as we wait for your arrival, we are tempted to do nothing, to forget to prepare. But you call us to wait with eagerness, activity, creativity. Inspire us to envision the future you have prepared for us, and give us the creativity and energy to prepare our houses for the day you arrive with new life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray, unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now.
beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is found in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in to marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the knife the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Word of God, word of life. Well, hi. Happy post-Thanksgiving. I'm Pastor Justin, and it's good to see all of you here on this Sunday morning. You made it, and I'm glad. My first job ever was an internship at a local newspaper. There I did a little bit of everything. I reported on high school sports, took pictures for local interest stories, wrote a column. But I spent the lion's share of my time in the darkroom, where I developed almost every picture that we used in the paper. The worst part of this job was publishing pictures that other people brought into the newspaper. If you brought in a photo for an obituary or a senior photo spread, I had to turn it into a halftone photo. You know, one of the photos with all the little newspaper dots. And these days, you just use a computer to do that. Boop, 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 you're done. That's all it takes. But back then, I had to use this huge two-room machine called a process camera to take a picture of your picture. It took about five minutes to set up the process camera for each shot and then about 90 seconds to expose the photo paper. Getting the exposure right on the first try was like hitting a hole in one. So usually I had to try it again several times, each time another 90 seconds just waiting in the dark. And 90 seconds is an awful period of time to wait. It's not long enough to do anything. 
especially in a dark room. It's just long enough to get bored. This is what I call nuisance waiting, waiting that isn't long enough to distract yourself with something more interesting. For me, nuisance waiting includes grocery store line waiting, red traffic light waiting, YouTube buffering slowly waiting. That's nuisance waiting, where you just stand in the dark doing nothing, waiting until you can actually do something. Nuisance waiting is only one kind of waiting. There are many other kinds. There's so excited to open presents on Christmas morning waiting, and I really don't want to have this tough conversation waiting. Even procrastination is one part waiting and two parts denial. It's just still waiting. <laughs> the problem is we tend to talk about all kinds of waiting as though they work just the same. That waiting is just the opposite of doing. Consider how our idioms describe waiting. Twiddling your thumbs, sitting on your hands, cooling your heels, killing time, holding your horses. These are pictures of action on pause. Far as verbs go, waiting is iceberg lettuce. No flavor, no nutritive value. <laughs> Waiting's just what happens when you're not doing. The waiting finally ends once you're properly verbing again. But friends, this is the first week in Advent, the time of the church year where we wait on Christmas, we wait for Jesus. And this Advent season at Our Saviors, we want to focus on what it means to wait for God. But as we wait, I want to throw out this idea that waiting is the same thing as doing nothing. Because if waiting on God means doing nothing, it sounds like the most dreadful, boring way imaginable to practice our faith. Thankfully, Jesus taught a great deal about waiting. And in the faith, Jesus taught his disciples. Waiting looks nothing at all like doing nothing. Instead, waiting looks like what you do if you expect a thief to rob your house. I've never personally stayed up late to wait for a thief, and I, thank God, I hope you never have to either. But say there had been a string of robberies in my neighborhood. What should I do? Well, if waiting is the opposite of doing, then I would do nothing. Each night before bed, I'd wonder if I would get burgled, and then I'd go to bed crossing my fingers. But if I thought a thief would hit my house, well, that's not actually what I'd do. I doubt that's what you'd do either. If you expect a thief, you lock your windows, right? You finally put that broomstick in the track of your sliding glass door. You call the cops, or even better, you rig up your house with a bunch of booby traps. You ever seen Home Alone? Classic holiday movie? Or Home Alone 2, 3, 4, or 5? Not classic. <laughs> as ridiculous as they are, this whole series actually perfectly illustrates this lesson from Jesus. In Home Alone, the clever kid named Kevin figures out some hapless thieves intend to break into his house, but he doesn't just twiddle his thumbs. No, he gets to work laying trip wires and hanging paints, paint cans from ceilings. He prepares a bunch of wacky cartoon traps for these criminals. For Kevin, waiting is filled with relentless activity and a sense of creativity, preparation and problem solving. For Kevin, waiting is a very busy little verb indeed. And waiting is not just directionless fretting. Waiting requires that Kevin orient himself to the word of the future. He imagines just how the thieves will enter his house. And then, clever boy, he imagines how they'll go through the house, what path they'll take. He figures out exactly which living room window Marv will enter without shoes, and that's where he puts the glass Christmas ornaments. Waiting gives us this orientation toward the future, and the more you know about that for which you wait, the better prepared you can be when it finally arrives. So what do you call it when you perfectly rig a wacky trap to burn off uh, Joe Pesci's hat with a blowtorch and then cover him with feathers? You call it waiting. Okay, so it's one thing to wait for a hapless criminal and wholly another really to wait on God. Jesus warns us in the gospel, we cannot predict the future, unlike Kevin we do not know which day or hour God will break into our lives, but we can use all our creativity and energy to prepare for God. God is actually a rather sloppy thief because generations of believers have charted the godly MO. We may not know the day or hour, but we have a pretty good idea of what to expect when God arrives. The difference between God and a featherhead thief, of course, has everything to do with what we're waiting for. 
A thief means to break in and do us harm, but God promises good things like forgiveness and kindness, justice, peace, and love. These promises tell us exactly where we should expect God to appear because God gives us these promises. That means we can expect God to show up there. But it's not enough to expect God to show up in forgiveness and mercy and peace and all those other good church words. We've got to get ready for it. We know how to protect our houses from criminals. We activate the security system and lock the front door when we leave for work and we buy one of those new internet doorbell things so we can spy on the UPS guy from our desk at work. We need to apply the same kind of ingenuity and cleverness and forethought to prepare our, our houses, our, our lives, for God's arrival because we're not always ready to receive godly gifts. In my family, this feud between my grandfather's siblings lasted so long nobody really remembered what started it. I give my mom total credit for bringing the two sides back together, but preparing my family for forgiveness took years. Years. What would your family need to mend old fences? What would you have to clear out of your schedule to say yes to a moment of unexpected peace? If you expected God to offer you a chance to heal your broken body or follow God down an unimaginable path or be there for a friend in a time of great sadness or give something to someone in need, what would you have to do to be ready to say yes? Friends, we can't force God to show up. We cannot know the exact moment in our lives when God will disrupt our carefully ordered world, but while we're waiting, we can do something about it. We have the privilege of using all our forethought and creativity and problem-solving that God has given us to imagine what our lives might look like if God's prom promises broke into our lives today. And if you don't know what to expect from God, we have millennia of stories and human experiences to help us. We can read the scripture to study the way God has moved through human lives. We can talk to our friends about where they have seen God break into their lives. We can even turn moments of regular everyday waiting into opportunities to practice our faith. Take even that moment of nuisance waiting those 90 useless seconds in the dark and transfigure it into a time of prayer this is how we wait for god with a flurry of activity with contemplative slowness with eager anticipation strategic calculation this is what it means to wait for god this Advent at Our Saviors, we're inviting you to just wait. Experiment with waiting in the way that feels most honest for you to wait on God. But there's no one way to do it. You may eagerly wait for what God is doing in your life, like the kid waiting at Christmas morning. You may wait on God anxiously, afraid of what the future may bring, or angrily because you've been waiting for God long enough, darn it. Friends, it doesn't really matter what kind of waiting you do. There isn't one kind of waiting on God that's more preferential or more faithful than any other kind because any waiting on God still focuses you on the future God has planned. It still makes room today for the tomorrow God will make. Any kind of waiting is ultimately godly waiting because waiting on God is it's just the expectation that God will do what God has promised. We have to practice waiting as people who follow Jesus. Because in the end, faith is nothing if not waiting for God. Every moment you spend preparing for God and imagining what this world will look like when it falls entirely into God's hands... That's actually enough. It's enough to bring God's future closer to today. If we expect God to appear like a thief in the night, if we begin to order our lives around these hopeful promises, before we know it, 
we will discover that God has slowly, secretly tripped the tumblers to the locked door of our hearts. It's time for the Kid Talk, so I invite all the children to join me up here on the steps.
Thank you for joining me up here. You can take a seat on the steps. Great. So I was going to bring my little baby up as a bit of a visual for us today. Um, but of course, she could not wait, and she's sleeping. I wanted to bring her up here because if you have spent any time with babies, which I know you have, and many of you have, you know that they are about the worst waiters we've got, right? Am I right, Betsy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they are hungry, they are hungry now. When they are sleepy, they are ready for bed, like five minutes ago. <laughs> And they let you know that they are done waiting. How? How do they, let, how do they tell you? What do you think? They cry. they cry. And is it quiet? No. It is loud. You can't escape it. They are ready. And they'll let you know. I think that we are all a little bit like that still, even though maybe um, when, we have to, when we're hungry and we have to wait for dinner to be ready. Did I, uh, does that ever happen to you? You're hungry and you have to wait. Yeah, that can get hard, and sometimes you get a little, um, we get a little cranky, and sometimes you call it that you're hangry, because you're hungry and you're angry at the same time, because you have to wait. We all have to do that, and we might not cry when we have to do that, but we still might be a little short-tempered with one another. It's hard to wait. It's really hard to wait. Um, right now, we are waiting for Jesus to come. We're waiting for Christmas, and that's, today is December 1st, and do you remember what day Christmas is? December 25th. So you have to wait all that time, and that can be hard too. What do you look forward to on Christmas? Jesus' birth, and that's a very good church answer. That's very, thank you, Ava. And we're waiting for Santa too. That's another really good answer. And what does Santa bring? Presents. Presents. That's exactly right. And it, we, we like presents. We like to give them. We like to receive them. And it could be hard to wait to um, see what presents we're going to receive and get to give those presents that we bought special for somebody else, isn't it? Yeah. That's what the season is all about. It's about waiting. And like Pastor Justin said, it's not just about sitting here, twiddling our thumbs and waiting for Jesus, but there are ways that we get ready. In church here, we start to get ready with our Christmas trees. And so we look around and we remember that Christmas is coming soon. And those little lights in the tree remind us of the light that Jesus brings, the light and warmth, and the way that um, Jesus gathers us all together. And our house, the Christmas tree, is a place we all gather around. But there are lots of ways that you get ready, with gifts for one another that helps us get ready for that day. Um, but every time that we remember Jesus and what he does for us, the way he treated other people, and we try to do the same, that's the way that we get ready for Jesus to come too. So when we treat other people well, when we look out for other people's needs more than just our own, it's all, those are all ways we get ready for Jesus. And I know that you're going to be good at that. So how about we pray together? You can do an echo prayer. Fold your hands, close your eyes, bow your heads, and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for sending us your son Jesus. Give us patience. Give us hope while we wait. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You can go back to your seats, thank you. Now I invite everyone to please stand as you're able, and let's get ready to proclaim our faith together. We tell the story about how Jesus came to us in this statement of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
You may be seated. Our worship continues with the giving of our offering, and I invite the children to come forward and lead the noisy offering. As we make this turn, this transition in our worship together toward Holy Communion, we remember the great mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. At the same time, if we're honest, many of us believe this and doubt that it is really true. We wonder how long we'll have to wait for Christ to return. We wonder if he ever will. So let's confess our unbelief and our sins to God. Emmanuel, God with us, 
We need your forgiveness for what we've done with the time you've given us. We fill our minutes and days to make ourselves feel useful and important. We distract ourselves in free moments so we don't have to wait, so we don't get bored. You find empty moments with the glimpses of your kingdom and whispers of your grace, but we have closed ourselves off from receiving them. We've worked to fill every moment to protect ourselves from one of the most egregious sins of our time, wasted time. Our choices prove we've doubted that your way is the best way. We choose presence. We choose productivity. You choose relationships. We choose returns. You choose selfless love. We choose selfless gains. You offer hope in a new creation full of peace, hope, joy, and love. But we have settled for the world's empty promises instead. Redeem us, Lord. We need your help while we wait. The God of Sarah and Hannah and Elizabeth promises to come along your side while you wait. While you wait for the fulfillment of what has been promised. The God of Elijah promises to meet us in the silence. The God of Jonah, Zechariah, and Thomas promises to meet us when we doubt. God is with you in all of it. When unanswered prayer would threaten to drive a wedge between you and God, God holds you ever nearer still. And while God calls us into seasons of waiting, God will never, ever leave you waiting for the forgiveness of your sins. The moment that you confess your sins, God forgives you. So hear this good news. You are forgiven. Amen. God hears us when we pray, but sometimes it's in the stillness of our heart. When we don't know what to say, God speaks for us and to us. So join me now in prayer as we offer our prayers to God and we listen for God's voice. Not knowing the day or the hour of your coming, O Lord, the church cries out to you. Strengthen the church and empower us in our ministry. Fill us with the spirit of your grace and speak to us of the power of your love. Not knowing the day or hour of your coming, O Lord, your creation cries out to you. Sustain the balance of all living things, protect the earth from misuse, and teach us to love and care for your good creation. Fill us with the spirit of your compassion, Lord, as we consider all that we have been given and how we are your stewards. Not knowing the day or hour of your coming, O Lord, the nations of the world cry out to you for justice and peace. Guide our leaders, unite us as people, and teach us to put aside barriers, uh, put aside barriers in bitterness and hatred. Fill us with the spirit of your grace, Lord, as your spirit reminds us of your love for all people. Not knowing the day or hour of your coming, O Lord, your people cry out to you. Comfort those separated from loved ones by distance, estrangement, or loss. And help us to care for others and rely on others' care. We pray especially for those who have been in the hospital, for Chuck Kwan, Jeff McKinney, Susan Kincaid, and Shelby Miller. We also pray for the families of Rita Elman, Lois Arndt, and Phil Miedema as they mourn their deaths. Fill us with the spirit of your grace, Lord, as we entrust all people to your tender care.
not knowing the day or hour of your coming, O Lord. We remember how you have conquered sin and death and washed us clean through the waters of baptism. So we give you thanks for the promise of new life offered to George DeBerg and Jacob Brick this weekend. Fulfill us with the spirit of your grace, Lord, as we remember our own baptism and the grace of your love that unites us as one with you. You hear our prayers, O Lord, and your spirit speaks to our heart. Fill us with hopeful expectation that in each day and hour we may love and serve you and watch for your promised return. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Even as we wait for the day when Jesus will unite all people and all creation from all times and places, that Jesus will unite us in the banquet that will never end, and it will be far more elaborate and extravagant than just this simple bread and wine. But on that day, that meal will unite us just as powerfully as this one does. And we remember that it was in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to this table where Jesus meets us today. May it be a sign of the glorious feast that is to come.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Before we go, a few announcements. First, I want you to take out your bulletin, close it, and look at that beautiful front cover. We are grateful, so grateful, for the artistic gifts of Gary Gady, who produced that piece of original artwork for us during this season of Advent. I hope that you will... Look at it, enjoy it, um, take a long look because there's a lot to see there, and that you will come back each week and see how it continues to evolve until Christmas Eve. In the season of Advent, we have lots going on. This is a season where our church really shines with lots of opportunities and events and ways to serve. So please do look at your bulletin, read it cover to cover, past that beautiful front cover, and check out all of those things so you don't miss out on something that would be just great for you or for your family. Today we are decorating for Christmas, and that starts out at uh, are the Christmas trees and getting ready um, in all the worship spaces in the gathering place. You see that the trees are already up, so that part's done, um, but we need to put some decorations on those, and I hope that you'll come. We'll be starting out at 5 for that. 
on Wednesday, there's the Advent Fair beginning at 5.30 with a delicious meal up here and then lots of fun activities for people of all ages downstairs. On December 7th, the women of the ELCA celebrate their Christmas luncheon. The Friendship Club goes to Nora for their annual pilgrimage on December 17th, but sign up for that is happening now at the Information Center. There's a bake sale on the 15th, and that's also the Christmas program and the Ugly Sweater Sunday. Be sure to stop by Target before all of their... I don't care where you go, but be sure to um, check out um, your closet. And if you don't have an ugly sweater, go and get one. And please don't make us guess if your sweater is meant to be ugly or not. It's just uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> Candle dancers will be performing on Christmas Eve, as always. And if that's something you'd like to be a part of, you can check out your bulletin for how to do that. And finally, there's sign up for Midnight Madness on December 8th to help support our Augie students as they prepare for finals. Right? Pace around here is just a little nutsy at the moment, but there's lots going on. We hope that you'll be a part of it. Now, please stand as you are able. Receive this blessing. As you leave from here and re enter the busy of this season, listen for God's voice. Watch for Christ's imminent arrival and feel the warmth of the Spirit's embrace. Amen. There's no better days than these. There's something in the air. It's coming over me. Feels like I'm awakening to a brand new day of hope, seeing things I've never seen. This is what I've been looking for. I found love, and love found me. Broke through my heart and set me free. And now I know that I'm complete, because I found love. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ. <laughs>